Western wear is a category of men's and women's clothing which derives its unique style from the clothes worn in the 19th century American West. It ranges from accurate historical reproductions of pioneer, mountain man, civil war, cowboy and barker clothing to the stylized garments popularized by singing cowboys such as Gene Autry and Roy Rogers in the 1940s and 50s. Western wear can be very informal, with a t-shirt and blue jeans forming a basic ensemble, or it may consist of tailored formal garments with Western accents. At minimum, Western wear generally incorporates a cowboy hat, a leather belt, and cowboy boots. Hat in the early days of the Old West it was the bowler hat rather than the slouch hat, center crease, or sombrero that was the most popular among cowboys as it was less likely to blow out off in the wind. By the 1870s, however, the Stetson had become the most popular cowboy hat due to its use by the Union cavalry as an alternative to the regulation blue kepi. Stampede strings were installed to prevent the hat from being blown off when riding at speed. These long strings were usually made from leather or horsehair. Typically, the string was run halfway around the crown of a cowboy hat, and then through a hole on each side with its ends knotted and then secured under the chin or around the back of the head keeping the hat in place in windy conditions or when riding a horse. The tall white ten-gallon hats traditionally worn by movie cowboys were of little use for the historical gunslinger as they made him an easy target, hence the preference of lawmen like Wild Bill Hickok. Wyatt Earp and Bat Masterson for low-crowned black hats. Originally part of the traditional Plains Indian costume, coon skin caps were frequently worn by mountain men like Davy Crockett for their warmth and durability. These were revived in the 1950s following the release of a popular Disney movie starring Fess Parker. Shirt A western shirt is a traditional item of western wear characterized by a stylized yoke on the front and on the back. It is generally constructed of denim or tartan fabric with long sleeves, and in modern form is sometimes seen with snap pockets, patches made from bandana fabric, and fringe. A western dress shirt is often elaborately decorated with piping, embroidered roses and a contrasting yoke. In the 1950s these were frequently worn by movie cowboys like Roy Rogers or Clayton Moore's Lone Ranger. Derived from the elaborate Mexican Barcara costumes like the Guayabra and the battle shirts worn by many Confederate soldiers, these were worn at rodeos so the cowboy could be easily identifiable. Buffalo Bill was known to wear them with a buckskin fringe jacket during his Wild West shows and they were fashionable for teenagers in the 1970s and late 2000s. Another common type of western shirt is the shield front shirt worn by many U.S. cavalry troopers during the American Civil War but originally derived from a red shirt issued to pre-war firefighters. The cavalry shirt was made of blue wool with yellow piping and brass buttons and was invented by the flamboyant George Armstrong Custer. In recent times this shield front shirt was popularized by John Wayne in Fort Apache and was also worn by rockabilly musicians like the Stray Cats. Coat. When a jacket is required there is a wide choice available for both line dancers and historical reenactors. These include frock coats, ponchos popularized by Clint Eastwood's spaghetti westerns, short Mexican jackets with silver embroidery, fringe jackets popular among outlaw country, southern rock and 1980s heavy metal bands, and duster coats derived from originals worn in the Wild West. More modern interpretations include leather waistcoats inspired by the biker subculture and jackets with a design imitating the piebald color of a cow. Women may wear bolero jackets derived from the Civil War era Zoev uniforms, shawls, denim jackets in a color matching their skirt or dress, or a fringe jacket like Annie Oakley. For more formal occasions inhabitants of the West might opt for a suit with smile pockets, a half belt at the rear piping and a yoke similar to that on the western shirts. This can take the form of a night jacket, leisure suit or three-button sport coat. Country and western singer Johnny Cash was known to wear an all-black western suit, in contrast to the elaborate nuddy suits worn by stars like Elvis and Porter Wagoner. The most elaborate western wear is the custom work created by rodeo tailors such as Nuddy Cone and Manuel, which is characterized by elaborate embroidery and rhinestone decoration. This type of western wear, popularized by country music performers, is the origin of the phrase rhinestone cowboy. Trousers 
In the early days of the Wild West trousers were made out of wool. In summer canvas was sometimes used. This changed during the gold rush of the 1840s when denim overalls became popular among miners for their cheapness and breathability. Levi Strauss improved the design by adding copper rivets and by the 1870s this design was adopted by ranchers and cowboys. The original Levi's jeans were soon followed by other makers including Wrangler jeans and Lee Cooper. These were frequently accessorized with kepi belts featuring metal conchos and large belt buckles, leather chaps were often worn to protect the cowboy's legs from cactus spines and prevent the fabric from wearing out. Two common types include the skin-tight shotgun chaps and wide batwing chaps. The latter were sometimes made from hides retaining their hair rather than tanned leather. They appeared on the Great Plains somewhere around 1887. Women wore knee-length prairie skirts, red or blue gingham dresses or suede-fringed skirts derived from Native American dress. Saloon girls wore short red dresses with corsets, garter belts and stockings. After World War II, many women, returning to the home after working in the fields or factories while the men were overseas, began to wear jeans like the men. Neckwear during the Victorian era, gentlemen would wear silk cravats or neckties to add color to their otherwise sober black or gray attire. These continued to be worn by respectable Westerners until the early 20th century. Following the Civil War it became common practice among working-class veterans to loosely tie a bandana around their necks to absorb sweat and keep the dust out of their faces. This practice originated in the Mexican War era regular army when troops threw away the hated leather stocks and replaced them with cheap paisley kerchiefs. Another well-known Western accessory, the bolo tie, was a pioneer invention reputedly made from an expensive hat band. This was a favorite for gamblers and was quickly adopted by Mexican charros, together with the slim Kentucky-style boaty commonly seen on stereotypical southern gentlemen like Colonel Sanders or Boss Hogg. In modern times it serves as formal wear in many western states, notably Montana, New Mexico and Texas. Footwear, see Cowboy Boot. Gallery. References. Further reading, Dress Code, Beard, Tyler. Aunt, Jim 100 Years of Western Wear. Gibbs Smith Publishers. ISBN 0-87905-591X. George Warren. Holly. Friedman, Michelle. How the West Was Worn. Harry N. Abrams. ISBN 0-8109-0615-5.